we're going to be talking about uh, SGX Secure Enclaves today. Uh, I'll be pre I am uh, Balaji Ramanujo. I'm a product manager for ESXi here at VMware. Um, we have Martin Carbone, who's a staff engineer, uh, who did a lot of the architectural and development work for SGX. And we also have a guest uh, speaker, Anand Kashyap, who's the CTO and co-founder of Fortanix, um, who used this secular enclaves feature. So let's get started. Uh, the, the regular disclaimer that we have to put up that anything that we talk about cannot be construed as that it is a guaranteed feature or it's coming, coming out in the next versions. So we also have a VMware assessment launch. Uh, if you have uh, the time, we can go check it out. It's on the level three. Uh, you can play around with all of the latest vSphere features and get your hands on at that. So here's the uh, agenda. I'll be doing the introduction, and then I'll be handing it over to Martin for the uh, technical portion of the section. And then we'll have uh, Anand come and do a demo of this session. And then finally, we'll have uh, some time in the end for Q&A. Uh, so please hold your questions till the very end. So how many of you have a application in the cloud? No, no application to the cloud? It doesn't matter. Yeah. So um, one of the things that we have found that uh, specifically with vSphere security, what we're trying to do is trying to make sure that the data is most secure in the cloud. It doesn't matter which cloud it is. So how do, you, how do we think about security? So we think about security in three major fashions. One is uh, data at rest, data in motion, and data during compute. So at, uh, for the first two, it's pretty simple, which is that during data at rest, you can encrypt data in uh, motion. We, can, we have encrypted vMotion for that. But the, today, we're going to be focusing on the third part, which is data in use. How do you make sure that the data uh, that you are using on the server, how do you trust the underlying compute. So this is where SGX comes in. And so now I'll be handing it over to Martin, who's going to go over SGX and what uh, this really comes. Thanks, Balaji. So as Balaji said, this presentation today is about securing data in use. And uh, before going into uh, enclaves and SGX, I thought I'd give a little bit of a background on some other precursors, I guess you can say, of, of SGX to better under, understand what SGX brings to the table. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Trusted Platform Module, or TPM. It's been around for many years now, and it's one way for you to uh, basically do something called measured boot or secure boot, which involves uh, measuring the entire software stack running on a host <clears throat> uh, as it runs and uh, generate an attestation report that proves to uh, external trusted parties that, hey, this machine was booted and is running software that, uh, that I expect it to run. Uh, this is an effective mechanism for, se for secure boot, but it has a lot of, of limitations. One of them being that, of course, it, it, it only happens once during boot, right? After which the um, system software can modify and you have no control over that. And uh, your trusted computing base for trusted computing basically involves three components here, the BIOS, the TPM chip itself, and the CPU package. So um, maybe 10 or something years ago, uh, Intel realizing some of the uh, shortcomings of, uh, the, uh, of, of using a pure TPM-based approach, came up with a feature called Trusted Execution Technology, which is basically a mechanism that uh, still relies on the TPM to store measurements of uh, code that is running, but allows for uh, something called late launch. So it allows for software to be launched and measured after the boot has completed. And it can be used by operating systems and hypervisors that uh, or other uh, security applications that want to deploy some kind of security module. Uh, the problem with this technology is that um, basically the way it works is it 
takes over the entire system while the measurement code, while the measured code is running. So you can't run anything uh, concurrent to it, uh, which is a major drawback. And it still relies on the TPM to record the measurements. So your TCB here still uh, encompasses the TPM chip as well as the CPU package, which is where the TXT feature is implemented. Which gets us to enclaves. So you can think of enclaves as sort of a TXT on, on steroids, meaning uh, it's, a, it's an abstraction that allows you to run a, a piece of application logic in a, a completely opaque way to the rest of the system. Uh, you know, meaning in a way that cannot be uh, tempered with by any, out, any external software or hardware entity. It's much more dynamic and flexible than TXT because uh, it doesn't freeze the whole system like TXT does. And you can run multiple enclaves simultaneously and they can interact with untrusted portions of the um, application and the operating system and uh, vice versa. Um, and in this case, you, there's no need to rely on the TPM chip, on the BIOS, or uh, any piece of hardware external to the CPU package. So your TCB is even further reduced here. So for the rest of, uh, of this talk, we're going to be focusing on SGX specifically, which is Intel's implementation of secure enclaves. So, uh, well, let's start by looking at what problem enclaves are trying to solve, right? Let's assume you have your uh, application running on a standard system. That application is running on top of an operating system, which may itself be running uh, on top of a VMM or hypervisor. And, that all, and all of that is, of course, running on a CPU. Now, your application may hold secrets like uh, encryption keys or uh, health data that you would not want an, uh, an, a, a, host, a hostile entity or, or malware to get access to. But uh, in the current scheme of things, uh, your trusted computing base encompasses the entire software stack, which basically means that uh, if your operating system, hypervisor, or application get compromised, your secrets, uh, the security of your secrets is no longer um, assured. They can be stolen, they can be leaked, and you basically have no security at all. So this is the problem. And, uh, where SGX, SGX comes in by introducing this idea of enclaves, as I said, which uh, some people refer to this as a non-hierarchical trust model in that it reduces the trusted computing base to the enclave itself and the CPU package. So if, if an intruder takes over control of your application, the OS or the hypervisor, there's still nothing he can do to steal these secrets uh, that are protected um, inside the enclave. Uh, this enclave, there, there's, a, there's a notion of enclave identity that's maintained by the hardware. This enclave is, a full, is fully measured, at, uh, meaning that uh, all its contents are hashed at creation time. Uh, this hash establishes the enclave identity, and it can be used to, for an enclave to prove to a remote party that it is indeed a valid SGX enclave, and it is running um, what the remote party expects it to be running. So you might ask yourself, okay, how is that useful? Well, remote attestation is a central piece of, uh, of SGX, and this is how it works. Let's say you have your application running and an enclave running as part of your application, right? Now, the way this works is, uh, let's say you have a party, in this case a remote verifier, that wishes to provision a certain number of secrets to this application so that it can work with them. But first, it wants to know if it can trust the enclave that is running in the application. And this is done through a process called remote attestation, through which the enclave first sends an attestation report to the remote verifier. This attestation report is a, it basically proves two things. First, that this is a legitimate Intel SGX enclave and not a fake enclave. Or, the, or something, or a malicious entity that's trying to, trying to pretend that it's an enclave. And second, it includes a notion of the enclave's identity, which the remote verifier can use to determine if it's really speaking to the enclave that it expects to talk to and not 
an enclave running malware, for instance. So assuming that the check passes, the remote verifier can initiate a uh, secure channel with the enclave, and this secure channel is cryptographically bound to the attestation report itself. So it can be done in a way such that the remote verifier knows that uh, the secret that it provisions, in this case encryption keys or health data, can only be decrypted by the enclave itself and not by a man in the middle um, agent that happens to intercept this communication. Or if the check fails, the remote verifier simply does not provision these secrets and raises uh, an alert of some kind that is, ha that is handled uh, outside the system. <clears throat> so once the secrets are part of the enclave, how is this used locally by the application itself? Well, this is where the, the power of, uh, of SCX really shows, right? It allows the application to do computation using these secrets without ever having access to the secrets themselves. So for an encryption key, you might have an enclave entry point that basically uh, says, encrypt this blob of data using the key that I know you have. And the enclave accepts this blob of data and then simply returns the encrypted blob. And the application never learns what the encryption key that was used to create this blob is. Same thing, another example with health data. Let's say you have one of your secrets is a database of um, composed of the health records of many patients. For obvious reasons, you wouldn't want this uh, any, any unauthorized entity to have access to this. But if this is provisioned inside an enclave, you can have another enclave function that basically computes the mean age of all the patients. And uh, it returns that information to the application without ever revealing the patient records themselves. So the secrets are never released outside, outside of the enclave, but they are still used, as you can see. Uh, now, for, for a more uh, technical view of how, how all of this is implemented, uh, basically, uh, SGX is implemented by, by, uh, by introducing a new type of memory called the enclave page cache, or EPC, that is carved by, um, by the BIOS at host boot time and is treated specially by the CPU. So basically, um, there's a memory encryption engine that ensures that all data going to and from the EPC are encrypted. And what that does is that it prevents uh, hardware-based attacks such as bus snooping. So even a, uh, an attacker who's uh, tapping the, the memory controller or the memory bus looking for trying to steal some of these secrets wouldn't be able to. Uh, this region of memory is not accessible uh, to any software when the CPU is not running an enclave. That is a guarantee uh, provided by hardware, not software. And an enclave can only access its own pages, so you cannot have enclaves accessing data belonging to other enclaves. That wouldn't make any, that wouldn't make any sense. And this, mad, and this memory, despite being protected, is still managed by the OS and hypervisor, which does allocation, mapping of memory to process, processes address spaces, handles eviction, and does so in a way that does not compromise the confidentiality and integrity of any of these secrets. Okay, so this was an overview of what SGX is, uh, what it's meant for and how it works. And now I'll hand it back to uh, Balaji. Thanks, Martin. So uh, with uh, uh, the software guard extensions, we talked about how uh, Intel has implemented that. Uh, we're looking to implement the same thing in vSphere as well so that we can virtualize this uh, secure enclaves and present this to multiple uh, guest operating systems because um, the way, way Intel has done it, like it has, um, one operating system can use the whole enclave. With uh, virtual, uh, virtualizing that, we can allow multiple guest operating systems to take uh, make advantage of this whole uh, enclave. Uh, with that, uh, we're, I'm going to hand it over to Anand, uh, who's the CTO of Fortanix, and they're going to showcase how these uh, enclaves actually work in person.
Thanks, Balaji. So we are Photonix. Uh, we are a runtime encryption company. And uh, while Martin and Balaji talked about SGX, uh, we have been building enclaves and building applications using SGX for the last three years. Uh, and we are very excited to partner with VMware and bring some of those applications, some of the software that we have built uh, using SGX on the VMware platform as well. So just last week, there was this announcement around the Confidential Cloud uh, or Confidential Computing Consortium led by Microsoft, Intel, and some of the other cloud providers. We were also part of the announcement as uh, providing the IBM Cloud Data Shield, which is a joint service we've launched with IBM Cloud. Uh, but that's a big validation of all the work we have been doing around confidential computing and Intel SGX for the last three years. A little bit of background about our company. We were established in 2016. We are based uh, here in Silicon Valley in California. And uh, we are a Series B startup. Most recent round of funding was led uh, by Intel, but we also have funding from some of the other VCs in the, in the Silicon Valley. So here's uh, this, uh, the, the outline of all the products that we have. Uh, in Photonix. So we classify them into two different buckets. So one is the runtime encryption platform. That is a technology stack, a software stack we have built on top of Intel SGX. So Intel SGX is a low-level primitive so it's at the CPU level, but to be able to really use it, build enclaves, port enclaves, establish trust between enclaves, you need to do more. And with our series of uh, softwares that we have built, uh, for example, Enclave OS, which allows you to take an existing application and run them inside an Enclave without modifying the application, without any source code change, or without any need to even recompile. Similarly, EDP, or Enclave Development Platform, is our SDK using the Rust programming language, which is recognized as a very thread-safe, memory-safe uh, language. And you can use that to build enclaves from scratch. Uh, and then we have Enclave Manager, which is a software at the orchestration layer. Once you have built your enclaves, you still want to be able to make sure that the enclaves can talk to each other, they can exchange secrets, they can establish trust between each other, and they can do re take advantage of the remote attestation capability easy easily. And Enclave Manager makes it much easier. And using the runtime encryption platform, we have also built a complete vertical product called SDKMS, or Self-Defending Key Management Service. And that one product is a combination of four different products. So it's, it, it is an HSM, or a hardware security module. It's also a key management service, and it also has capabilities for secrets management as well as uh, tokenization. So it combines everything into one single pl platform, or one single product. So I'll talk about uh, some of these products in more detail. So SDKMS, as I described, it's been used by enterprises to offer key management or encryption as a service across uh, an organization. It's deployed in the form of a cluster of nodes. The nodes could be appliances, which are FIPS 140-2 level 3 certified, or it could be software-only solution. And again, it's a unified solution bringing together an HSM key management, tokenization, and secrets management. We do support modern REST APIs. But we also support traditional crypto interfaces like PKCS11, KMIP, that all the HSMs are expected to provide. The advantage we have is that uh, we, d we deploy it in the form of a cluster, which allows us for linear and horizontal scalability for the solution. So as you increase the size of the cluster, you get more transactions per second. You also get high availability, disaster recovery, all those things are built in into the solution itself. And then the entire product, the entire software, runs inside the Intel SGX secure enclave, which means that you get the software flexibility, which helps you scale and uh, be distributed, have fault tolerance, but then you get the hardware uh, security that you expect from an HSM using SGX. And then the other product we have is the runtime encryption platform. And here's an example of what you can do with the runtime encryption platform. Let's say you have a three-tier web application. You have an Nginx-based uh, front end. You have a MySQL-based uh, database, a back end. And then let's say you have a Python application, something in the middle. And uh, you have a microservices architecture, so all of them run inside containers. With runtime encryption, what you can do is you can take these individual containers, wrap them with Enclave OS, and now enable them to run inside SGX secure enclaves. And then all of the data processed by these applications are protected at runtime. 
We go beyond that. We also encrypt the file system, which is used to persist the data. And we do that by mapping the keys used for encryption into something which is derived and created inside the enclaves and never exposed outside the enclave. We also use Enclave Manager to help with the remote attestation of these individual components of the application. So now these individual containers, they can talk to Enclave Manager, and verif which can verify the attestation, remote attestation for these applications to make sure that this is the right application, it's not a simulator, this is running on Intel SGX hardware. And then, based on that, it can issue certificates to these applications, which they can now use for, for, for as a TLS certificate. And once you have done that, then your applications can talk to each other, and they're just verifying TLS certificates. But in effect, what they're doing is they're also verifying the Intel SGX remote attestation capability for the applications. Uh, so till now, we have been uh, offering the runtime encryption platform on bare metal on Linux. Uh, working with VMware, we'll expand it to offer it also inside virtual machines uh, and on the VMware hypervisor as well. Uh, so Enclave Manager, I talked briefly about it. This is our orchestration software, which allows us to easily create convert uh, applications into something which can run inside enclaves. But it also has a bunch of other things. It can help uh, manage policies around which application or which enclave can run where. So if you have a test enclave and a production enclave and a test machine and a production machine, now you can cryptographically ensure that only the test, uh, the, the production application runs only on the production machine and not uh, on the test machine. And you can do all that by tying the identity of the application, the identity of the CPU where the application is running, and verifying all these using Enclave Manager, using the remote attestation capability. You can whitelist your applications. Now applications have strong cryptographic identities, so you can uh, have Enclave Manager whitelist what application can run where. Uh, you can do monitoring, so it provides you visibility and control around what enclaves you're running in, in your entire ecosystem. Uh, and, and it enables things like uh, when an enclave dies and it has to move to another, another machine, another host, how do you make sure that you can transfer all the secrets from one machine to the other machine and how can the enclave carry all those secrets? So with this, uh, I'll show you a quick uh, demo of uh, an application, a three-tier web application that we built. Uh, and we show a before and after picture. So before we show that even though you followed best security practices, the built-in 3 tier web application, but there's still secrets which can be extracted by an attacker from the memory. And then I'll show how when you're running the same application inside enclaves, those same secrets are protected and they can't be extracted. Okay, so this is uh, a typical, again, 3 tier web application. Uh, and this one simulates uh, uh, a web service where you can enter your credit card information and that will be stored inside a database. So right now you're interacting with the front end, entering some, some sensitive information, credit card numbers. Uh, and once you're done, the next part is, uh, I think we can go back. One second, I think I need to restart this. Okay, I'll just let it play. Oh, the video doesn't work well. Okay, so we enter the information, and next what we'll show is an attacker will try to scan the memory of the applications that are running. So we'll show it will scan the memory of the MySQL application and then the Nginx application. And then it will try to extract secrets from, those, uh, from the memory of those applications. So in this step, uh, we're trying to extract data from the memory. So we first find the process ID for MySQL, and then we dump the memory for, for MySQL using a tool called ScanMem. Uh, once the memory has been dumped, we look for strings which correspond to credit card numbers, and then you can see you can find all the credit card numbers from the MySQL uh, database. Next, we run the same attack against Nginx, and uh, we'll try to extract the TLS private key uh, for the Nginx web server. 
And again, we use uh, open source tools to do that. We get the process ID for Nginx, we get the memory, and then we find uh, the TLS private key for the, for the Nginx uh, web server. So just to show that uh, all the things we can do as, a, as an attacker, uh, if, even though you followed best security practices, the applications are still not protected at runtime. You can dump the memory, you can extract secrets from the memory, you can get the TLS private keys, and then you can impersonate the web server, you can put your own malicious server over there. And next we'll show the, that was before and now this is after. Now let's say the same set of applications are now secured with uh, Photonix runtime encryption. So for example, you take MySQL, you can drop MySQL inside a secure enclave and then you run the same attack. Uh, you dump the memory and the memory corresponding to the application is all encrypted. So when you scan for credit card information, you'll not be able to find anything. And the same attack, uh, again, you're looking for strings, and you don't find any, any string corresponding to credit card information. We run the same attack against Nginx. Again, we are looking for the private key um, by doing a memory scan, and we will not be able to find the private key. OK. So, so th those were all the building blocks uh, using SGX, using runtime encryption. Uh, this is one use case uh, that we see often come up uh, with our uh, conversations with customers, especially in the financial industry. Uh, the, the use case is, uh, let's say there are multiple parties, and this could be multiple banks or a bank and, a, and let's say a telco, and they, they're all producing some data and then you want to be able to do some analytics on the combined data set produced by multiple sources. And the different parties are not allowed to share data with each other, so they encrypt the data. And then the idea is, can you do some useful analytics on the encrypted, combined encrypted data set? And the only way to do that, other way to do that would be homomorphic encryption, but that's not really real or practical right now. With runtime encryption, what you can do is, you can get that encrypted data inside an enclave, and then you can decrypt the data by getting the key at runtime. And to do that, you'd prove your identity to an external key management server, which is our key management service over here, SDKMS. And Enclave Manager can facilitate this entire interaction. So the application, when it runs, it goes to Enclave Manager, produces this attestation. Enclave Manager says, yeah, I believe you are the right application. You're running inside an Enclave. And then uh, the application will use that certificate to authenticate to SDKMS. It will get the key and then it will decrypt the data. Once you've decrypted the data inside the enclave, now you can run whatever analytics you want to do. And you're not limited by, by the, uh, things like homomorphic encryption, which can be extremely slow. And then you can run analytics, you can re-encrypt the results if you want and send it back to the, to the parties. Uh, this is extremely useful in things like uh, anti-money laundering or uh, if you're looking for uh, credit card fraud uh, and you need to be able to combine data from multiple sources and do analytics on top of that, um, then this use case uh, comes up quite a bit. Right, uh, thank you. I'll hand it back to Balaji. Okay, thanks, Anand. So uh, with this, uh, we're almost done with our session. Uh, our final call to action is to uh, people who are interested in uh, making use of this function with uh, vSphere. We are looking for people, uh, customers, to do beta testing. So if you are interested in uh, doing a beta test for this feature, uh, you can contact me, and uh, I can uh, work with our team to get it uh, all set up. Um, here's the quick screenshot of how this would look in v, uh, vCenter itself. And uh, you can see here from the, v, uh, from the VM settings that we can specify the amount of memory that you would like to allocate to the enclave for a VM. And then in the uh, server itself, we can also show you how to enable the secure enclaves and make sure that it is uh, visible to the guest operating systems. With that, uh, we're done with our presentation. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask that now. Yes? Yeah, so I think, uh, did you hear the questions? Uh, yeah, uh, so 
AMD, I, I think there are different levels, right? Uh, AMD SCV uh, provides protection at the level of a entire virtual machine. So you can basically protect a VM from having its contents snooped by the hypervisor, right? Whereas with X SGX, you're working at the application level, right? So an enclave cannot be snooped neither by the hypervisor nor by the operating system running inside that VM. That VM. So I'd say that's the, that's the major difference. I don't know if Balaji has anything to add. Yeah, so it's just different approaches to the, they are doing more for encryption at the whole memory level, so, but application within the uh, same virtual machine can potentially snoop on each other. With this, the, the, it's a, that uh, use case is covered as well. And SGX also provides additional security uh, with uh, integrity protection and rollback yes. protection. AMD does not have that yet. So it provides protection against uh, integrity of the memory as well as the uh, rollback protection. So you can't take a snapshot of the memory and uh, paste uh, those memory pages back in SGX. Uh, AMD does not have protection against that. So with Enclave OS, uh, the way we've designed it, uh, it implements the Linux system call interface. And it has been written such a way that uh, when, when you load an application, uh, instead of making system calls to Linux layer, we'll intercept it and we'll route it so that it's implemented inside an Enclave. And again, uh, with Enclave OS, uh, we can support pretty much any Linux application in theory. But uh, right now, the support is limited to uh, the kind of applications we have chosen to prioritize, which are more towards business applications, enterprise class applications, things like Java based applications. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, so we do support some, uh, I mean, again, any Linux application in theory can run with Enclave OS without any modification to the application. But then things you need to worry about is, uh, is performance. Maybe a very heavyweight application, you're limited with a smaller Enclave size. Uh, so, so you need to worry about uh, whether it meets your performance requirements or not. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. uh, with the cloud, uh, I think Con Confidential Computing Consortium, it's, uh, it was just announced, uh, I think, a, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're having more and more vendors join into that. And so as we see more adoption, I believe that that problem will get addressed as well. It's pretty nascent and early days for this. Uh, there are quite a few uh, limitations, especially with respect to memory, as uh, Anand mentioned, with SGX. And uh, Intel is evolving this as well. And so as we see this evolve, we will and Intel makes more investment in this area, I think we'll see more progress in this. Yeah. I didn't intend to pressure the value. Sure. Yes, yeah. Where you are in the progress of Yeah, it's very early days. It's still early days, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Okay. I think we're done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.